All right, y'all, you know, half step with Marcus J is live. We are back in the building after a week off, and we got a hot, hot show, blazing hot show for y'all. We got a special guest in the building. I'm feeling so motivated. And when we bring her on the air, you're going to be motivated as well. We're going to ask, what the hell? Obama esque, what the hell? That's why it's going to make us wise. We're going to get it in tonight. And you know, half step with Marcus J is right now. Open your ears, strap on your thinking cap, socially conscious talk that's entertaining with a dash of humor and the top sports stories of the week. It's time for Ain't No Half Steppin' with Marcus J. Sellers has Jordan, Jordan with two seconds to go, puts it up, it's good at the buzzer, Michael Jordan has won it for Chicago. Manning, lobs it, Burris alone! Down goes Frazier! Down goes Frazier! He hits one deep to right center! That ball is out of here! The Yankees win the pennant! If they lion, then they must be half-stepping. You know how Stephen Marcus J is back live. Be down with us tonight, 804-402-2893, to be down with the flagship show right here on Legacy Internet Radio. Thank y'all, everybody, that's listening to us. Thank y'all, everybody, that's listening to us on TuneIn. Thank you to everybody that's listening to us on your mobile phones, on your iPads, your iPods, on your Android applications, on your computer, on the TuneIn app. Or if you're on the computer, you have searched Legacy Internet Radio and you are hearing the sound of my voice. We appreciate it. Thank you to everybody that is listening to us during our replays right now on YouTube. We appreciate the love that we're getting. If you want to be down with the show tonight, call us up at 804-402-2893. The phone lines are open. They will be open for the balance of the evening. And we got a lot to get into. I gave you guys a little bit of a tease right at the top of the show at the beginning. We've got a special guest who's going to have us motivated. We're going to get motivated tonight. And so I'll be introducing uh, our guest here momentarily. Of course, we have some what the hell, some Obama-esque what the hell, because you know what? He makes me ask that question every once in a while. And this week, there's a couple of things that are attached to our president that uh, maybe not him directly, but of course, we're asking the question, what the hell? That's why it's going to make us wise. What the hell is going on with the Ku Klux Klan and what did they do that's making us go crazy and ask what's up with them? And the Army just came out with something in the last week or so that really is has us all given the side eye. So we're going to introduce the crew and then we're going to get into the show as she does every single second Monday of the month. Joining us in studio is our sister, Miss Tony is here. What's up, girl? Hello, hello, hello. How you doing today? wonderful how are you i'm doing good i'm chilling it's good to see you thank you it's cold you cold <laughs> yeah what do you mean it's cold man this is like it's november it's supposed to be like this outside what you doing it's cold you... well i've been cold nana? all day nana nana look here sir nana i didn't realize it was as cold outside as it was this morning and i've been cold all day because i didn't wear a jacket until oh Steve so you didn't wear a jacket and then we supposed to listen to you complain about being cold i won't complain Jeez, I'm starting with you. I don't already. need it. Yeah, I don't need it. You don't, I don't need, it. need it. All right, should I behave? Please do. Nope, ain't I'll gonna. Ain't gonna. All right. Well, as we uh, as we are are normally do at this point, we introduce our whole crew and joining us. We're very very happy. I mentioned motivation. Uh, at the top, we've got a very very special guest joining us tonight. She is an educator. She is a clinician, and she is a motivational speaker. We got our sister joining us in studio, Miss Jermika Pregram is here. What's Hello. up, girl? How this you doing? is exciting. You excited? I am excited. Your family, VUU family. Woo! 
See, I, I, did, I was wondering how long it was going to take for us to jump in and, and do that, right? You see my hat? See I my did, hat? I, and I wanted to ask if I could borrow you it see, you for see my hat? next homecoming because I don't have any VU paraphernalia and I am jumped on we, about we, that we, a lot. We need to hook you up. I just got a shirt and like a button. We need so a, we need a, we need like, a, hold a button. A you, 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 you alone, we got to get you I know. I know. One of my great mentors, He he he's an alum and um yb if he's listening he's like you know you gotta get your game up man you keep repping that nyu we gotta get you some vu stuff yeah you know i'm working on it about that though the store when i went on to and that's vu for those folks that are outside of the richmond virginia area that's virginia union university which is my alma mater 1996 yeah. Uh, when I was there, the store is in a different place than where the store is currently. So I went on campus a few years ago looking for the store, and it's like a lounge. And I'm like, how am I supposed to buy some paraphernalia? It's on the other side. Oh, of the boy. Yeah. yeah. So it's in a building that didn't exist when I was in mm-hmm. uh, was on campus. So we got to get you. I know. We got to get you on Stickers. campus. Stickers. My, my car is just like. So you don't have any paraphernalia in the car? I, no. I did in my other car. I has another car, but yeah, I don't drive that. Anyway, let's just. You, you do, you do, <laughs> I feel so guilty because I go hard for VUU. I really do. But then when people see my car, they're like, "Where all this NYU stuff? Didn't you go to Union?" I'm like, "Yeah, but girl, let me explain what had happened." Now, next time <laughs> I see <laughs> you, I'm going to need for you to have some paraphernalia right. on that car. All Can right. we make that promise? Yeah, no, Pinky seriously. swear. Pinky ah. swear. Ah, yeah, you might you know want to peek with my mother. She's the AKA <laughs> over there. <so>. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mom said, "Don't let you talk no, about that." She yeah, yeah don't the, even throw up no sign wanna, on she it. Don't throw, she don't want to throw it up. <laughs> oh, well, uh, I'm glad to have you here, and of course, I want to take some time to kind of talk about mm-hmm. you and what you're doing, okay. uh, and some of those great things. And you know, we teased it by uh, <clears throat> referencing the motivation, motivational yeah. speaker, and I want to kind of get into what all of that means. Um, mm-hmm. I've been perusing big word you like that? Mm-hmm. I do a nice I Virginia do. Union word <laughs> <laughs> been perusing the website here so I've okay. you know kind of looked at it and have an idea of what's going on with you uh, let's just talk kind of the obvious the whole motivational st- speaker thing where did that come from and talk about your company here momentarily I introduced yeah. that in a minute but the motivational speaker thing where did that come from um, I just enjoy connecting with people and I, I really felt like people used to say, you have the mouth of gab. Like when I was living in New York, people used to say, girl, you could take my socks off and sell them right back to me. Cause I like, you get me hype and right. I believe it. And it's like, okay, you start to believe it. When people start to say, you look like a horse, you walk like a horse or walk like a duck or whatever it is, animal, you really believe it, but you also feel it. And I feel it when I connect with people, I've, you know, spoken and not bragging, but when people have cried and like, I can really connect. I'm very intuitive and I'm passionate. Right. And so that's how all that, but being a clinician to this point kind of made me say, this is where it really ties in for me. Um, even when I speak to friends. So I'm always like, listen, you know, I need you to stay focused. I know this is hard. I get it. I understand. Because I think people also perceive me to a degree as being perfect, believe it or not. And um, it's because really I shield myself. I'm very, I'm very just kind of flat, right. affect. Um, clinical term for the clinicians out there listening. I have some friends. <laughs> but well, I'm, I'm actually very glad. Flat. I'm actually glad you said that because uh-huh. let's define <laughs> clinician for mm-hmm. our, our listening audience. And if you want to call in and ask any sure. questions of the clinician slash motivational speaker, <laughs> uh, call us at eight zero four four zero two two eight nine three. But yeah. define clinician for us. A motivational speaker kind of defines itself. Yeah. But clinician means what? I provide services like a psychotherapist, which I am at this point, I'm a resident. So basically any therapist who is licensed to provide therapy. And if you call up, I do take all insurances, Aetna, Blue Cross Blue Shield. <laughs> but I'll take your EBT card. <laughs> Whatever you got, we can work it out. Um, but it's basically where you are providing that service as a clinician, whether you're in the mental health field. Um, but you have to be licensed or in the process and this is not to be 
hard, like mean and, and, and cold because I, I was a counselor and I get it. A lot of people will say, oh, you're a counselor. And I'm like, that's great that you're aware of what a counselor is, but we are on still two totally different levels because I'm in the process of being licensed or someone who is can diagnose. And it's a big difference. Counselors are in there to prevent you know, the child from being, you know, misplaced out of the home um, to prevent foster care. They're there to be supervised right. and they would be supervised by myself who's in the process of being licensed or someone who is. And when you start talking about clinician to also and what that looks like with the acronyms of these credentials behind the names, um, it can be a little tricky. So everyone does not have to have a Ph.D. to be a clinician. Now you have nurses that are called clinicians as well. Right. I'm not good with their um, credential standpoint and the acronyms. Um, but they are now called like clinicians because they're a part of that doctor family where you can get some sort of service to receive help for whatever it is that you're looking for. Um, so, yeah, I diagnose and all that great stuff. But I don't tell people that when I meet them. I tell them I'm a waitress. You tell them you're a waitress? <laughs> I do. I say I'm a waitress. Why do you tell them that? Because I used to waitress. And, I, I mean, I waitress when I was at NYU. I mean, I bet you I that's your that end. Stuff. That's your end right there. That's how you get them to talk. Because when mm -hmm. you are in a, uh, uh, a restaurant environment, yeah. depending on how you come upon a person or how you catch them in their day, mm -hmm. man, you ask the right question. And next thing you know, it's like 10 minutes later or 20 minutes later. And they then told you their whole life story. Do, that's I how you get them. I, I do see. get them. I can, I I can get you. I'll give you a free like 20 really? minutes. Really? You think you can get sir? me? I'm, I'm, I'm a tough sure. nut to crack, man. No, it's not about cracking. It's about you understanding. That's what clinicians, we get you to verbalize. Ah, you see psychodynamic the ther uh, therapy there. We get you to verbalize. Did you see the light bulb, Tony? And the CBT <laughs> therapy and all of that. I know some of my friends are listening and they're like lawyers and architects and teachers. They're like, well, I want to hear that <laughs> right now. Well, tell them if they want to, uh, tell them what, what, what y'all want to hear, lawyers and doctors and architects. I, I don't know what they want these people they're so they're they call me well, oh, they're calling me but you know what's funny but, 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 but see you can help them out but if you needed to have a home <laughs> built you call your architect friend yeah. or, or if you you know needed law help you call your lawyer friend so that's what the community is about it is it takes a village it does and and with i think for me um what i look at as far as from my standpoint as a clinician is i'm good at hustling Mom, sorry. Don't mind. Not that type of hustle. <laughs> My mom is an. She said, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Lord, touch her heart. I knew she was going. Lord, I thought the child was okay. No, no. But I'm, I mean, I mean, I'm good at surviving. I, right. mean, I mean, I'm not going to make this a confession. There are some things that my nah, mom you could confess. But I mean, I'm good at surviving. Girl. And I'm good at foreseeing certain things on how you can create it right. to be yours in a very, you know, dynamic way. Um, so my thing is that, um, I love sharing things. I love where people will say, yeah, you know, I've been doing this for 10 years. And I'm like, so what's the result? Right. Because I am pretty good at, at keening in on what you're saying and seeing how we can make it larger. Right. And I'm really big on connecting with people culturally within my culture and like what that looks like, because we think we know and have it all. And it's so sad to me when I meet someone that, um, will go ahead and say, yeah, um, I'm doing X, Y, and Z and I've been doing this and I, but they're not receptive to re to receiving information on how to expand and how to kind of make this a little bit better. It doesn't mean that what you're doing is wrong. It just means here's something in addition to, and I feel culturally, this is where we kind of fall. Do you find that a lot of that comes from just being downright lazy? Now, that's a different dynamic. Okay. That's a different dynamic within the theory of whatever it is that we want to talk about. When we start specifying being entrepreneurs, this is the one thing that I notice. And if this is the open show that I know it is, right. um, then I'm going to speak my mind. This is the one thing, and this is, has nothing to do with racism, has nothing to do with race. This is the comparison of us within each race culturally and how we um, really seem to understand that we have it together and we do, but there's some things that we're lacking because we were never raised in a sense to understand, to have these conversations at the table, like many of our white counterparts or whomever. We were raised to survive right. and how we got it is how we got it and how we may still be getting it is, is how it is. And if that works for you, you're going to continue to perpetuate the habit of whatever it is, whether it's hurting someone and you know it or not, or it's hindering you and you know it or not. So my thing is when we start talking about businesses, I've noticed even down to business cards, um, we slap CEO 
all over everything. It's bigger than our own name. And I'm not saying we have to replicate what, as I mentioned, other people may do. But there's a way of how we need to echo of how, or how we need to portray what it is. When we have to have some sort of professionalism behind it. When we own businesses, you can tell who the owner is. You know, when we start talking about black-owned businesses, and I'm not talking about stores. I'm talking about where you have to walk in and, you're, you know, your CEO is sitting next to you. Maybe because it's a small business or because they're always there, but you don't need to make that presence known, you know. There are certain things that I, I've noticed that we carry out, so. Let's talk a little bit about what you have founded. Uh, there's a organization called Circle. Yeah. Uh, and you're the founder of it founder. and so let's talk about it tell me what circle is or tell our mm -hmm. listeners what circle is and then let's uh, let's let's talk about it okay founder uh, founder that's me <laughs> circle um, stands for community involvement to remain connected and lead effectively it's very long but it's very lengthy and I decided to keep it that way because I felt it still spoke volumes to the acronyms of what I wanted circle to mean um, and so basically that is a service oriented project where you are able to either come on board and be a part of um, a project that I either sought out and connected with an agency or organization, whether it's dealing with the homeless or dealing with children or gardening, whatever it is, you have the opportunity to come along and to learn how to gain some additional skill sets. Um, and then that goes into the second component of Circle Plus, which stands for challenging issues while revitalizing communities through learning experiences. And this is a two-fold component. So the reason why I made both of those um, together is because have you ever gone to like a symposium or a conference and you were so excited for whatever field or area that you focused on or you wanted to learn more about and you get there for a day or two or maybe for half a day and you learn all these great things and all these things start going through your mind. Yeah, and you want to take it back to your community, and you're like, oh, my God, yes, man, when I get back, I want, and then you become lost, or you confused, or discouraged, or I don't think this is going to work type of feeling, and you don't know where to start. So I figured, why not make this a two-component type of project where circle, you get the hands on, and then circle plus, um, which the plus stands for a positive change you get an immediate follow-up. So let's just say on Saturday you did a volunteer project where you were doing a point and count, which is for those in the mental health field may know what that is, and they should. Point and count is when you go out and you count for the city um, how many people are homeless in a certain demographic or catchment area. And through that, what you will do is then come back and kind of turn in your information, and that's it. You get points to put on your resume to say I volunteered but what have you really learned besides maybe a quick training that you, they told you to arrive for for 30 minutes prior to you passing out water you know etc cetera, etc cetera. wait let's just say you want to continue to carry out working with the homeless or do something right. more so what will happen is if you did that event on Saturday morning or Saturday night the following day is an immediate follow-up through a seminar or workshop and you will have several ways that can be presented and, and et cetera. And then you then are certified at the end. You get a certificate where you're certified and it says Circle Plus Leader. And you are responsible to go back into your community and to carry out this bridge and to extend it. And, you know, it's like, a, it's like this snowball effect. You just keep going. How long have you had the, the, the Circle? Project? Uh, eight years, but it's just probably ten actually. But it's just coming to light like over the summer like I've been holding on to this since I've been in New York so right before I left Richmond went to New York and then I so when back. you are implementing tell, <laughs> tell us about the people who are like who are you targeting who are you who's your target audience who do you want to show up for circle anyone can show up for circle if you go to the website um www .germica, G -E -R -M -I -K -A, speaks S P E A K S change C H A N G E U um, dot com. You can go to the workshops and seminars, and it will give you a layout. Now, the circle page is actually completed. Um, it's just a few things that needs to go on, so we're working on that. But that will give you the entire layout of where it's like you have opportunities for soup kitchens. Um, in April, um, I'm going to be doing 
on Easter, fingers crossed, but if not, we'll move on somewhere else. Um, we'll be doing a pamper and milk and dry food type of event. So we got um, a lot of community service. A lot of community do. service, women and girls conference. I have not heard of a women and girls conference, and this is not to be mean, anyone out here, whoever's done it, in Richmond. I've always heard of women conference um, right. or young girls conference, but I haven't heard of a women in girls. Right. Um, so we're looking to do that in February. Tell, tell, mm-hmm. tell me about that. I mean, I, mm-hmm. I, I can use my instinct and kind of... <clears throat> guess yeah. why you say it that way yeah. but i'd rather you tell me why do you think that there is an importance for there to be a difference between women girls mm-hmm. women and girls mm-hmm. like why is there a big deal there um i think when we start talking about the dichotomy of wanting to get a message across within that top both of those populations is very important to combine both because you either gone through the stage or about to go through a stage right. whether that's the tweens which the conference will focus on ages 10 years plus right. so if you're 10 years old and you have a mom or aunt or whomever you would put that out there um you could attend but also because it's really important to focus on the communication piece of understanding you're replicating to be this you know mentor to be this um whatever it is that you can do to connect with a younger person and or vice versa right i i always feel like it's give in exchange that just because you're young doesn't mean you can't teach me right. and um, this is why as a clinician um, I have decided even though I don't focus on play therapy right. and I do not focus on children my focus is actually adults but I decided to take um, several positions because my internship kind of does that where I'm working with children right and it's really hard for me because you got to be nice and that's not me uh, <laughs> I'm not nice all the time Tony could tell you I struggle with that sometimes too <laughs> I'm not nice nice all the time really really nice. <laughs> your face is like y'all get along in here <laughs> okay well, well yes y'all do i tell you during the break okay <laughs> i tell you i tell you during the break yeah. i'm looking at your website and okay. it basically tells us that you focus on two uh profound and unresolved epidemics that affect people of color yeah. uh why don't you tell us what they are what your thoughts are the racism um, and what else did I mention? The stigmatism uh, and mm-hmm. the impact of racism. Oh, yes. Um, which is still alive today. And um, as we go through this um, and we start talking about what racism really looks like to the t- core, people just think about being attacked. Um, racism about attacking, whether you're saying it verbally or you're attacking me physically. Right. But racism is not to be mean. I hope you still be able to operate after I leave here Girl, today. <laughs> I, I had shut a place hey, down look, in New York. They're like, get her out of here. She hey, is look, causing issues. Ain't nothing you gonna say is gonna be nowhere near as bad as what <laughs> I've said. So, so you can you can go ahead and speak your mind, my sister. I my thing is there is the institutional racism. People are just starting to talk about what that really looks like. Right. Um. <clears throat> And the tears of that is very layered. And um, even within our own state, there's also a beautiful Commonwealth state, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> Sorry, Com- Com- hint, hint. Commonwealth. 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 Yeah, anywhere below the, that Dixon line, Look boy. Up Commonwealth, we in for a surprise. If you want to know why we're speaking with the tongue firmly <laughs> in our cheeks right now. <laughs> Seriously. But when we start talking about what racism looks like, um, it, it's so ingrained. It is beyond what we have even phantom it's beyond what is the control we would like to have over it and whether it's ferguson richmond virginia greensboro north carolina georgia i don't care london you talking about racism go to australia i'm going there in the summer and i'm not prepared i'm really not i am but i'm not um but there the racism there is so real there's racism within our own dichotomy light skin and dark skin right that's racism it's not just prejudice we talk about some serious like you trying to tell me if i'm not light with long hair no offense light skin women all right i don't want nobody calling up here they can call I and talk to me like 804 <laughs> on her website she bald head no sweetheart that was my choice <laughs> we can but, talk we can talk about it because the one thing that we <laughs> always want to do uh-huh. is provide an avenue for folks to speak their mind and speak freely yeah. we can agree to disagree without being disagreeable mm-hmm. uh we can speak with our voices raised but at the end of the discussion we're going to still look at each other and say we love 
love each other yeah. um, even yeah. if we don't like each other because yeah. the reality is you got family members you don't like <laughs> let's be very clear <laughs> let's keep it 100 let's be very that's, that's, clear that's, that's, that's what we do here so yeah. let, let, let's talk about that okay. um, yeah, as far to. as the uh, mm-hmm. the the stigma to, uh, the, the stigmatization of course I'm mm-hmm. tongue tied here uh, yeah. on the impact of racism I want to talk about that because a lot of times our people get so caught up in uh, you mentioned it earlier about uh, appearances. You know, you want to put CEO on the business card. You know, you, you, you ain't should. got to do all that. Yeah. You know, do your business, yeah. earn your money, mm-hmm. work hard, mm-hmm. and the recognition will come. But mm-hmm. a lot of times, how we've been treated historically has us wanting to puff our chest out a little mm-hmm. bit more mm-hmm. than 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 normal. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about the impact mm-hmm. that racism has had on us as black folk mm-hmm. as a whole what's your thoughts on that um that's really general and it's good question i, I asked so. it generally i know because <laughs> uh, i wanted me. i wanted to see where you I were know. going so i could meet you there um when we start talking about the impact on us um it's so layered and it's so heartbreaking um and it's unfair because it makes me think what direction are we going to end up going because to be honest we don't we still don't have a direction we still are out there trying to find our way and it's because we lack unity it's because we're so busy trying to outdo each other through gucci and versace who don't recognize us at the end of the day they don't even know that we exist or breathe jordan is gone on with his life and still creating every shoe in a different color every day and we still buy it don't even get me started but see the thing is this 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 is what my issue is and let me yeah we have never been raised when we start talking about how to survive in this world how to understand what policy looks like now your now your radio listeners may turn off because no one likes that word policy is life this is why this is how we survive not policy necessarily in the white house Okay, this is a policy that's been passed down through other things, through other means of people that understand that we don't understand what policy means. It's a language. Policy is a language that is foreign to us. And when white people were raised, they were raised to have dinner at the dinner table and not all. So whoever out there, white, Hispanic, whatever, I get it. But a majority, they were raised to talk, have a conversation Okay, and when they had these conversations, it was you sit, you sit down, you listen, because your goal and your responsibility is to be a legacy, and you're going to pass this information on, and this is going to keep going on for generation and generation and generation, and that makes the unity tight, whether culturally or family wise. And so when we start talking about listening and understanding now to get people to go out and vote, let's take it back to the beginning. We never sat at the table. We're missing the table. Right. We never had the conversation. Very few single parent home or two parent or gay, lesbian. I don't care what parent household you grew up in. For us, it was always fatherless, single parent. So if anybody did have the conversation, it was because you were forced, you were taught, or you, you went and you sought it somehow. And so this is where I feel that we fall behind when we start talking about understanding the dynamics of what's going on. Policy and foreign affairs, general attorneys that's just been elected, why you think it's not many of us in many of these positions? Not, not just on that level, but overall, it's because we weren't taught. We went out and sought it. I'm getting a question mm-hmm. from one of our listeners, okay. and I'm going I'm to pose it to you. Okay. I, have my, I have my opinions on the answer, okay. um, but I'm going to have you kind of jump in. Mad? No, 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 no. <laughs> don't don't worry about that because I'm gonna tell you why. I'm gonna tell you why. <laughs> no, tell you why. Yes. Because I piss people off every week on the show, and they, and they come back Good. and they listen because they know that I'm coming from a position of love. <laughs> okay. And they're not gonna agree with me sometimes. Okay. They may not agree with me 51 percent of the time, but mm-hmm. that 49, they know. You know, Marcus's heart is in the right place. Mm-hmm. And quite frankly, I don't care if they don't agree yeah. with me. I, just, yeah. I really don't care if they don't agree with me because if you always agree okay. and you're always in line there's no room for change there's mm-hmm. no room for progress mm-hmm. you don't always want to be with people that's going to be with you 100 percent because you can't grow without a struggle mm-hmm. you gotta struggle exactly. and so pissing people off is good for the soul i love it yeah i love it I too love it. so our sister jackie uh is listening to us she's up okay. in philly and she's asking why we must compare ourselves with other races. I have my thoughts on that. I want you yep. to jump in here first. I don't think it's about comparison. I think it's about having an understanding. 
right? So we're not going to do, what's her name, Jackie? Jackie. Uh, Jackie, we're not doing apples for apples. It's about learning and understanding. And when we start talking about educating, that's different from instilling. I want someone to instill in me because I can be educated by reading, but if I don't take the time to do repetition to understand and carry out, it's not going to work. I get the feeling I'm not really answering her question, but I hope I am. So, but Jackie, it's not about comparison because let me tell you where the white people are and you can call me rebellious, you can call me radical, however, I'm passionate. I'm passionate for all equality, white, purple, Hispanic, whatever. But when we start talking about us and where we're failing and falling in between the gap culturally, this is a problem and it's irritating, all right? So... Uh, as far as for white people, yes, they have compared, okay, right. um, because they had to figure out what structure was needed to organize. Right. Now we're talking about organizing. Right. Shout out to Undoing Racism Internship Project in New York, which I was an intern of, very proud. Only the elite of the elite can be selected. But check them out because they offer a great two-day workshop on racism and what this looks like, and it will blow your mind. Everybody's in that thing. So She, but, she, she continues. Okay. Uh, she says that uh, we fall behind oftentimes because we focus on the negative rather than yes. the positive. We're beautiful people people yes we have our issues uh but what culture doesn't uh and she says that we should worry about cleaning our own house first yes. absolutely agree with and you on uh, absolutely agree with you on that one jackie i think oftentimes one of the mistakes that we make as as people is we worry about like you say, the comparison of, of, of other people thinking that we need to be in line, that every single culture has the same issues, right. so every single culture has the same solutions. Right. And I think that is a problem, especially when you look historically at the way that a lot of cultures today in 2014 uh, are mm -hmm. attacking their issues. They're oftentimes using a model mm -hmm. that we set forth historically mm -hmm. so i don't think that we need to worry about comparing ourselves mm -hmm. to other cultures i think what we need to do is to get back to what we used to do we used to have our own businesses we didn't have to go to you know the big department store because uh moms and pops had their own di deal they had their own bomb shops they had their own grocery store they had their own you know auto mechanic shop they had all of that kind of stuff and 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 you know a lot of the big businesses came and took that away but there's money there for us to come together and actually do stuff mm -hmm. together mm -hmm. and i think a lot of the problems that we have is that we don't get mm -hmm. together mm -hmm. because as we had stated earlier on we're oftentimes worrying so much about doing for ourselves mm -hmm. that we don't think about the community as a whole i mentioned earlier mm -hmm. as you know kind of you know tongue-in-cheek that you know it takes a village but guess what that's real talk it does take a village and there's no way that we can do this mm -hmm. if we emphasis on we mm -hmm. we do this. if we're such beautiful people jackie how come we can't get unity together Beauty is not just a physical, and it's not about um, where we come from necessarily. It's about where we are and how we can get further. That's what unity is, right? So let's be very clear, and I speak strong out there, so, you know, I ain't in here upset, like, you know, my fist in the air. <laughs> <laughs> That's because mine is in the air. Uh, I, I but at the end of the of day, <laughs> I've, I've come to learn that I'm judged all the time just by the physical from my own people, guys that, you know, have attempted to date, and I ain't going to get on that, but, you know, somebody, like, I wish she would say who she I'm dated. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, the guys that have attempted to date me, it's been this thing, even down to the core of individuality of who I am. Because I, go to, I went to a PWI, and soon to go back to another one, I'm bougie, so I'm no good for you. But if I was light-skinned with long hair, and this has nothing to do with, with light skin and long hair, or you could be dark skin and long hair, but preferably in the songs and everything else, it's portrayed that light skin is great. Right. With long, long well, hair. Well, I mean, we, we, we know the history of that. And, I and, get and, it. And it, we, we know the history of that, and the unfortunate thing is a lot of our brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. for that matter, are still caught up in thinking that white is right. And, you know, they think, we think, mm -hmm. many of us think, I should say, that the white man's ice is colder than ours. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's the, you know... It's just as cold, people. His ice ain't better. Our ice ain't worse. Mm -hmm. It's the same ice. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So we do this to ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I think oftentimes you have people in our, old, in our own cultures that 
personify those things. I give you an example: the light skinned girl realizing that she's sitting on something that the brother might want, so she's going to further accentuate her European look mm -hmm. because we know many of our brothers find that European <clears throat> look attractive. Attractive, yeah. you know, and, and that's not to say that it is or it isn't. You know, mm -hmm. me personally, anybody that knows me knows it. I'm attracted to sisters with color, <laughs> you know, yeah. chocolate and yeah. natural. But that's yeah. just me. Yeah. That doesn't mean that I'm right. right. Doesn't mean that the brother who likes the white girl is wrong. Right. It just means that we are different. Yeah. But you can't sit here and tell me that she's better because right. that's where you lose. Me. That's the point. That's the point. You can't yeah. tell me that she's better because she's of a lighter hue. Yeah. Because the reality is the creator gave us melanin and melanin. We know if we want to get scientific with it, melanin is a dominant trait that makes us strong. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So if you have any questions about that, how about you pull out Hidden Colors Part 2 and it'll tell you all about melanin and where it comes from. Ain't no half step on Marcus J. Be down with us tonight. Thank you all, everybody that's listening to us on TuneIn. Uh, www.legacyinternetradio.com 804-402-2893 is the number to dial to be part of the discussion we got our sister in the studio tonight miss jeremy Capigram. she's a motivational speaker and a clinician we're talking about many many issues uh of uh, race of color uh of motivation uh so if you want to get some motivation if you want to just be part of legacy internet radio Tonight on Ain't No Half Step with Marcus J. Call us up at 804-402-2893. Hit us up in social media. We see you out there. If you want to be down, make yourself down with us. Looking at your website, and I've been on it off and on all day because, like, you got a lot of cool stuff on there. And I just like looking at it. Okay, thank you. Uh, one quote that I see here, and I'm going to read the quote, and I want you to speak directly to it. It's a little bit lengthy, the piece that I want to read, but I want you to kind of speak to what uh, you've written here in your bio. It says that her inspiration is support and guide all children adolescents and young adults to fathom the prominence of self-esteem goal setting bullying peer pressure and education also confirms her desire to provide the same conversations uh, you prefer black people you got african-american i'm gonna say black people okay <laughs> black community humanitarian and ally of numerous organizations for human welfare uh you remain heavily involved and connected with mentoring yes. implementing and developing seminars programs centered on higher education for mm -hmm. black youth adolescents and adults there's more i'm gonna stop there okay. uh i've kind of set up where i want you to kind of talk about yourself and what you're doing there particularly with children and adolescents and mm -hmm. young adults because anybody that knows me knows mm -hmm. that is how you reach me that's how you get to my heart to oh. talk about it because marky mark let the kids oh I, well, I got 12 <laughs> kids what a check? No, I'm just kidding. I, 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 I stole that from my brother but Aww. you 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 already know but in all seriousness yeah. tell me about that part there um, it's really for me <laughs> about making the connection to, um, just be a role model now. Um, and I know people of my friends that are out there jokingly, yes, I have a sense of humor and I have said some things that may be inappropriate, inappropriate, haven't we all? But I, at the end of the day, I'm very serious and I'm a role model and I'm serious about what I do. I enjoy it. I love it. But what hurts my heart is, um, seeing people being misled children being misled and I am not the be all know all but anything I don't know and if I can't get for you I will refer and trust you who I refer is going to be on point um and if they can't do it they're going to refer is going to be on point so I do believe that people you hang around are a reflection reflection upon you so I try to make sure that I keep my little circle tight and you know it is very very small um as far as close friends but when we start talking about allies and um supporters and things it's very large and I I love that i enjoy it and when we start talking about kids especially can i say city of, in the city of Absolutely. richmond um in the city of richmond and shout out to dc i'll be going there soon too but Chocolate um, city. yeah but you know when we start talking about that and, and what it looks like across the board across america for these disenfranchised areas and children children all children have my heart i don't care what color you are if you're in a disenfranchised area you really have my heart right okay so there's a little bit of a difference unfortunately we have to be able to kind of distinguish that because that's just how life is um we're all we're all separated and categorized somehow by something and that's just the way it goes um so it doesn't mean i over favor any um other kids but my heart is there for that and um 
just kind of being raised to observe other children who I never understood said, my mom didn't tell me not to wear, for instance, a female, a black bra with a white shirt. Yeah. As a, mean, as a as a guy with, just, a, with a sister, I actually saw yeah. you know a sister had on white sweatpants and she had on colorful undies and mm-hmm. you know as a dude, of course, I'm looking at it. I'm I'm not going front on that, but mm-hmm. after I got past that moment, mm-hmm. <laughs> I said to myself, yeah. "Did nobody never tell you that you can't do that?" And so to speak directly to what you're saying, a lot of times those conversations aren't happening happening mm-hmm. on the basic level yeah. with little girls yeah. and little boys yes. about what's appropriate about the fact that when you wear pants that are bigger mm-hmm. than your ass mm-hmm. you should probably wear a belt mm-hmm. and if the belt is too small then get a different one how do we come away from that Did, my <laughs> question know what I mean? is how do we let a generation influence so many it's, other people even older than you and scary. i marcus to wear their pants that's the question it's scary, it's scary. that and, and, I mean, and, and then all you had all you had to do with me for me and i can only speak for me is is tell me where that came from yeah I mean, you, you know you just tell me that came from prison culture <laughs> you know tell me it came from prison culture mm. and tell me that in the prison yeah. those fellas with their pants sagging were the girls you're the girl mm-hmm that's the that's sign. all you had to tell me. Yeah, you didn't have to. You didn't have. You didn't have to tell me no more than that. And 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 just to come right back to what you were saying about uh-huh. how do we get past it? Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes you do get discouraged. You 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 wonder if we've gotten to a point of no return, in the sense that there's so much negativity going on in our community. Mm-hmm. How do you turn it around? Mm-hmm. But then you step back and you say, "There's Marcus J." And there's Tony, and there's Jer- and there's Jermica, mm-hmm. and there's people like us mm-hmm. who stand on that mountain and sound the alarm mm-hmm. that this ain't right. Yeah. And we gotta know that there's a lot of us. Mm-hmm. We gotta know that once we touch somebody, yeah. that person is gonna touch somebody else. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because that's what the snowball effect is. If the snowball effect can can balloon to negativity, then we have to know that at some point the positive is going to come back around. We have to know that because if we don't know that, if we don't understand that, if we don't hold on to that, mm-hmm. then we're already doomed because we're walking around in a cloud in a funk of negativity yeah. with no end in sight. And that kind of purgatory can't be good because yeah. I got an 11-year-old at home. Yeah. And I got a teacher, you know, how to seek a man will not seek or have a man seek her, mm-hmm. you know, in, a, in an appropriate way and for her to know how to receive him. Yeah. And if he is approaching her with his pants off his ass, that's not a good look. Yeah. And she's 11 and she already knows. Yeah. And so we got to know. I'm getting some comments here, Jackie. I see you. Let me get some of your comments in here. Also, uh, my brother K-Dub is listening to us uh, down in the ATL. Much love to you, bro. Uh, Shout out to Lanton, Florida, yeah. April in Jersey. Hey, Rocky. Hey, Never so Look So we got, we got, we, <laughs> give me those names again. We got Lance. <laughs> in us. Florida. Okay. We got Lance in April. Uh, April's in Jersey with my brother. Okay, we're, at, we're in Jersey because you know um, I always fit in a Jersey. Hoboken? Plug. I don't know. I'm, I'm from <laughs> I'm from Jersey City, and Hoboken is our next town over. So okay, much love. I think it is Jersey City. My, they moved. I don't know. Uh, you know what? I, I always <laughs> figure moved. out a way to get Jersey City in on every. Show. Okay, uh, so you just made it easier. Okay. Uh, you made it easier for um, Jackie is saying. Um, mm-hmm. uh, she's saying. Well, she's actually agreeing uh, with us. She says subconsciously we start to believe, mm-hmm. uh, and oftentimes our actions reflect that yeah. uh, she's speaking to uh, an earlier piece of the conversation yeah and yeah. she says uh <laughs> she had told a young man about the prison thing in the in mm-hmm. the sagging pants mm-hmm. uh he looked at her and rolled his eyes and says so and what we have to combat is the mentality that makes you say so you don't care that you're emulating prison culture you don't care that there was a plan that was constructed mm-hmm. that starts with your music. Mm-hmm. And hey, look, man, people in our general age group, we all grew up with NWA and, mm-hmm. and, and uh, all of that kind of stuff. But we also grew up with Rambo and we didn't take Uzis and go and shoot up a bunch exactly. of Afghans. You know what I mean? Like yeah. we realized that it was fictional. But at some point, 
they took that stuff and I, I don't want to pick on music that's just one aspect that we can kind of attack and I want you to comment on this mm -hmm. they don't realize that they're being attacked through every single medium and when you emulate the things that you are seeing particularly the negative ones you find yourself part of that train that leads from the educational system that don't teach you to the music that is teaching you negativity right to the prison system. Mm -hmm. Like, again, I know positive will eventually prevail, mm -hmm. but how do we, as a, as a motivational speaker who I know you speak to youth, mm -hmm. I know you talk to adolescents, yeah. and I know, I, I know you talk to young people, mm -hmm. how do you... Yeah. rationalize the frustration that we feel as adults and college educated people and I don't know well I do know I, I'll let you tell where you grew up but I grew up in the hood okay but I didn't grow up hood okay I grew up in the hood but not hood so I, I I'm, I'm kind of bi bilingual when it comes to that <laughs> and so I understand a lot of the mentality but I also know you can't live that way because mm -hmm. there's no there's there's no other side of the mountain to that. So how how do you rationalize that? Because that frustrates me. I don't know if you can see it in my face, but I I need to stop talking. And let you talk. Mm -hmm. Help me here. Um, I'm hearing a few things, and so when we start talking about rationalizing behaviors, um, especially when they're continuously being perpetuated by an individual and or groups, um, whether that's as a whole culturally, um, but what I'm hearing is where did we get lost in translation to understand that what you're doing is wrong? Whether you're an individual and or a group, a gang, however, whatever group, a group of girlfriends just going around using the word B, hey, bitch, you know, that's cute, bitch. You know, like, I get it. I, 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 I don't condone, but I understand culturally. And it's sad that I do, and that's what hurts me. It, it really hurts me. It really makes me frustrated because um, I look and I say, I just, I remember shaking my head when I first used the word B and saying, whoa, it wasn't because it was a bad word. It was because it didn't sound right and it wasn't a part of me. So there's a question also entwined in that is how do we become so influenced to follow others who are doing this ignorant type of behavior, whether it's killing each other, um, confronting each other and putting it on world star hip hop, um, just all these stupid things, you know, swinging from rods, shout out to Mimi and loving hip hop, I don't know, but like... <laughs> Like all these things, how do we get to this point? Right. Um, but more so the point that's hindering our reputation where we really can't go any further in everyone. And I mean, the society is scrutinizing, scrutinizing you where when you walk into a building, you're being watched. Cameras are being zoomed in, zoomed in. You're being stigmatized and you're being marginalized and all these things, you know, from the classrooms to this because of an act that has been perpetuated over time. And it, it can't be shaken. Things that have been said in front of me when I were in class at NYU or on the campus or wherever, um, or just in, in mixed groups that people felt comfortable to speak around me in a way. Right. I, I thank God I have the measure to understand that I don't have to um, react with anger because it's already seen that way for blacks to right. do that especially women but it, you know i always get oh you articulate so well well shouldn't we all that's actually an insult when you tell me i articulate well so this it goes back and i'm going to tie all this into the loop this goes back to children why i have a passion for them when they say but i ain't got no pen to give you i remember and now when we start talking about being raised i'm gonna tie this in i was born in west germany my dad was in the army all right and so i came to the states six something like that and my mother's like uh-huh sugar you sure did but i mean we i came over here and it was a culture shock for me because I was used to being around white and black and we played and it wasn't a big deal. Right. And when I got to, and I'm from the South side, it ain't where you from is where you at. But Hey, I'm just saying I claim both. I grew up for a majority of my life. Once I came to the States in the South side, I also lived in Texas, Colleen, and I lived in other parts. I was able to travel, but I think that's what really connected my passion to say, this world is beyond where you are and you don't have to, represent what people are doing. I always tell people, just because you're black and I'm black doesn't mean I'm the representation of all black people. Yep. I don't condone this ignorance of certain things. And this is why a lot of some black men that have approached me who haven't made it far, this is why 
in in general, the harassment now, they call it, which it is, when you're being called a B because you don't want to give out your number. Because the ignorance, they don't get that. I can see your your behavior and your demeanor from the way that you're walking with your pants down. Right. Two blocks, I can see your boxes. And by the time I hit the first block and I know I'm about to cross over to the second, I'm already saying I'm not even going to go past you because you're a waste of my time. You're going to say something to me. Why do black men feel the need to always have to say something? You know what I've noticed? I'm just tying this all in. White men, they're very subtle. Yes, they do do the same thing, but a majority of the time, they're going to give you eye contact, and if that, that's their way of communicating. And if you don't choose to speak or make eye contact to them, that means leave them alone. Well, I'm going to stop so, you, I'm, I'm gonna stop you okay. there because... That's a different topic. No, 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 <laughs> that's not why, because I want to debate okay. that. That's okay. why I'm going to stop okay. you. So we can, we can debate Good. that because... All black men don't do that. All black men don't. <laughs> all, all, all don't. And we can be clear on, yeah. All, yeah, let's be clear all, on all that. don't. And, and, and that right there mm-hmm. is the frustration that I see mm-hmm. because you get a lot of the negative acting mm-hmm. ones that end up being the, represent, the, the, the representatives mm-hmm. for all, which yeah. is why when you turn on the news, yeah. you see negative black men yeah. doing things. And you see a lot of positive white men yeah. doing things. It's that brainwashing. Yeah. But the unfortunate thing is when you apply it to your own personal experience, which you're obviously doing, exactly. that's when you get the feeling that, that you're it's all that is all. Right. And so that that to me is a large part of the problem, because people who are positive mm. don't say or don't do mm. enough. I'm getting a question here. OK. Uh uh, a guy, huh? No, I'm getting, <laughs> I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm getting a question from from Jackie. Jackie okay. is asking me a question, and then you a question. Okay, Jamaica. First question she's asking me: uh, How often do I talk to? You? She's asking me, Marcus. How often do I talk to young men? I talk to them as often as I can. Yeah. Uh, I talk to them in my neighborhood. I talk to them in my daughter's school when I see them. They know me when I see them. They know me. Uh, I talk to every young man that's in my village, and so you know. Could I do more? Of course. Everybody could do more. But I can't honestly sit here and say that I do nothing. Right. Because that is not the case. And when I come on these airways every single week, I know for a fact, because I've spoken to them, that young men are listening to me. And they know where I'm coming from. I'm a man. Mm -hmm. I'm a real man. And I'm a black man. And I'm a strong black man. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that in a place of arrogance or conceit. Or any of that kind of stuff. I'm saying that from an area of pride. And so when I speak that way, I know that there are young men who listen to me and they want to emulate me. Right. At least they should. And again, I'm not saying this from a position of arrogance. Mm-hmm. I'm saying this because I know what I do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I know what I do. And so that, that's how I answer to that. Now, she's asking you, uh, Jamaica, why are you dogging black men? Jackie, I'm not, I, I look. I hear you say. I hear you. The reason why that was kind of what my thought was. That's why I, I stopped you. You know, I was just kind of rambling to kind of get through the point. And when we start talking about condensing all of that, it looks like, in a sense, it is negative. And I get it. I understand. Um, so I'm not going to take the word dogging and run with it as, as if. But I'm not dogging all black men. And you said it right. You hit the nail on the head. This is my. These were my ordeals. Yep. And it doesn't mean that it reflects all black men. Yep. So I'm not saying that that the you know the guy hanging with the pants down and da da da. da. No, I'm not. I'm not saying that that that's the representation. But I did say just because I'm black and you're black doesn't mean I'm the representation of all black people. Meaning, if you're doing something that I don't condone, do not look at me and expect me to understand or be along with you. It's just not going to happen. But Jackie, I hear you. Um, sign up for my workshop. How are you doing? That's going to be going on. Yes. Yeah, I will be in LA, honey. So I will be doing that, a relationship panelist. Um, I'm excited about that. But my thing is, no, I, maybe that's what I really need to be focusing on is relationships because... I've, I've, we, need I've, get you, uh, <laughs> we need to get you. We need to get you to help to us really out. We 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 do relationships here. Uh, we are in a partnership with the Love Revolution, and we mm-hmm. do seminars every third Saturday. So okay. we would certainly invite you to join us yeah. uh, and impart some of your uh, 
clinician uh, tactics. I, I don't even know. I don't even know if I even said that properly, oh, but uh, but it is what it is. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what you're doing, where we can find you, yes. what you've got out there. We're gonna take a break here in a minute, okay. but before we do that, okay. give us a. Uh, did I have you do this again later on? But just give us some information on where we can find you if you're listening to us tonight. Twitter. Uh, how we can find you and what uh-huh. you're doing. Twitter. Um, I just set up my Twitter. So um, you can go to... I'm going to wait because someone's telling me, hold on. She's <laughs> yeah. You can go and check me out on Twitter at um, circle, all caps, the change, C-H-A-N-G-E. Um, or I guess you could just type it in lowercase at circle the change either way it should pop up um, you can find me on Facebook um, and I need to get that straight too because I have three Facebook pages and people are requesting really? I have like so many requests yeah. for my personal and I cannot let that happen but if you go to my my public figure page it's Jermica Pegram comma MSW that is the page you can follow me on or you can type in circle um, and if you feel like circle is too general, you can type in community involvement. It'll pop right up on Google and it'll take you to the Facebook page. I don't have Instagram. We talked about this. Yes, line. we did. Yes, we did. <laughs> I do not have Instagram. I, I am, I have been like told I need Tony, to get on Tony Instagram. Is giving, Tony's giving you the look like, really? <laughs> yeah, I heard I need to get on there like ASAP because that's yes, the place. Yes, you do. I it, tried to convince Marcus to get on Twitter. I was like, you need yeah, to get on Twitter. Yeah, I, I have a, I have Twitter and I, and I tweet my tweet. Uh, my Twitter is attached to my Facebook page, so I don't have to go on to Twitter too much. And I do go on it enough. No one ever tweets at me, so mm. you know I, I almost feel silly even going on there. Like, why am I going there? Nobody likes me on Twitter. Aww. You know, I need to develop a relationship with Twitter. Um, before we go to this break, I, I actually want to address this one last thing before we go to break uh, because Jackie is giving us one more question. And 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 girl, I, I like love you Jackie. because I love Jackie. Uh, you know, Jackie is She's also Jackie is also a unionite. <gasps> Jack, you better parent, do it, Jackie. Jackie. Jackie's also a <laughs> just like uh, just like you are, oh, and, and just like uh, just like I am. So, um, but she is asked a question, <clears throat> and Tony, I want you to address this one first. She's asking when a white person does something negative, we don't condemn the whole race, but when it comes to the brothers, one brother steal, mm-hmm. they all consider thieves. Um, I want us all Pretty to good. kind of briefly address it. Uh, Tony, you are first, Jamaica, and then myself, and then we're gonna jump into a break. What you got? Uh, I mean, I disagree with that. I'm not one who, you know, you hear people say, you know, if you see a, a black woman who does something bad, and people say, oh, she's making us look bad. She's not like making me look bad. She's making herself look bad because I speak for my own actions. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it, it's easy to generalize and um, you just kind of make assumptions of the whole race based on the acts of someone else. But like Jermika said earlier, you know, if, if someone's doing something positive, then everybody's jumping on the bandwagon. But mm-hmm. if it's bad, then it comes back to us. I, I disagree with that. I don't generalize. I know a lot of people do. It just to me, like, what's the point? You know, that's the actions of someone else. I try not to follow suit. Period. Jermika? Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think it's just based on things that have been out there for so long and people are really starting to lose their sense of thinking for themselves. Right. So when we start talking about um, you know, black and white, that's automatic dichotomy for people to kind of be on the left or the right. right. Um, and so it's very hard to kind of strip that away. If we just kind of start generalizing what's right and what's wrong, I think it would be a lot easier for people to morally and any other way to kind of come to a decision or make a decision that – this is not acceptable, but we can't do that anymore nowadays. Media puts it out there. Today, a 57-year-old Hispanic male, da da da. Today, a 45-year-old black male. You know, so it's very, it's it's just attached, and the stigma that goes back to stigmatization of how we then start to process our thinking because that goes to educating. People learn as education through media. Right. So everyone doesn't pick up books and go to school. A- education is how you can get it. And if you believe it and if you feel it's right, then that's what you're going to, that's it. I think a lot so. of times what we need to do is we need to pay attention. And yeah. oftentimes we don't pay attention. We don't look at things with a third eye and a yeah. third ear. When we look at the tell lie mm-hmm. vision, mm-hmm. you know, they tell lies mm-hmm. and it's visual. And so you see it. You know what I mean? If you listen in or you're watching a television program, that's exactly what it's designed to do. It's designed to program you to mm-hmm. do or think whatever the mission of the, uh, you know, the sender 
wants you to 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 get Mm -hmm. now one thing that i will speak to directly is us as people how many times do we see something go down and we like oh damn i hope it ain't one of us Mm -hmm. dc sniper damn when we saw it was black people we all bugged out we was like word you know when it was the cop last year in california we didn't realize we we was like man i hope that's not a brother we found a brother was like oh damn this is what we do because we know that First of all, there's certain stuff that we just don't do. <laughs> and then when we find out that we did do it, it's like, man, that's crazy. But we get caught up in in that because tell lie vision. You know, we're programmed to think certain things. And so we get afraid at being portrayed in a negative light mm-hmm. when individually we just need to do what we got to do. Yeah. We need to each one teach one. You know, you push me and I pull you. If we do that, then we going to be okay. But a lot of times we don't do that. Our villages are broken. And so when we see the DC sniper, that brother was lost. And every single black person was like, oh, my God, I can't believe somebody did it because somebody lost their brother. And so I think that, you know, to specifically address, Jackie, uh, what you're asking, why do we have to have the stigmatism when white folk don't you got to pay attention to the whole media thing because we're not they don't want us to be betrayed positively Mm -hmm. that's the reason why the president catches so much heat a whole lot more than any other president did in the Mm -hmm. past and we're going to talk about our president barack hussein obama here in the next segment ain't no half stepping with marcus J, with miss tony and with our special guest jamika pre we're going to take a break and when we come back we're going to ask what the hell is going on <laughs> with our president. And I've got a special word about a young brother who needs our help here on Ain't No Half Step with Marcus J, as well as Legacy Internet Radio. We're going to tell you about young Dietrich, and we're going to get into our missing child. Marcus J, Ain't No Half Step with Marcus J. Be back in a few minutes. <laughs> 